big fatty intake tube. A lot of guys, you know, the big thing is, well, in 2021, players fixed the intake tube. Players fixed the intake tube with a same restrictive tube. It's just plastic now. It's still bottlenecks at the shock. So our big fatty tube's gonna take care of that. This is six ply silicone that like, I mean, it, it may as well be a plastic tube. You literally can't squeeze it. Yeah, it'll still flex. And it comes with uh, stainless steel T-bolt clamps. So yeah, first thing we're gonna do is rip this turd out of here and uh, get this big fatty in here. This is a eight mil to remove these factory ones. Literally that easy. There's the factory one. This is what we're talking about here. Look at that. Like, see that? Like, there's, there's a reason this is restrictive. This is your intake tube. No reason to restrict anything. I don't care if it's plastic from Plutters now or not. Like, it's it's restrictive. It's so much smaller. Ours versus theirs. That's dinky. See that little guy. Wanna get this big fatty installed and go from there. A little trick I like to use is just wipe some uh, soap and water on the inside of these hoses. Maybe on this little piece, maybe right here. It just helps them go on a lot smoother. What I like to do is uh, push the tube to the firewall then tighten it. So as I'm tightening it, I will uh, keep pressure towards the firewall. Um, <clears throat> guys who do like aftermarket springs, our tube's designed for the stock shock. That's fine, but if your spring rubs this tube, you're fine. You can always zip tie it to the firewall against this bar. Um, but yeah, if you have aftermarket springs, the spring can't cut the silicone. It can't wear through the silicone. It won't cause any damage. And if it does, it's got a lifetime warranty. I, I don't care how you get it damaged. All right, guys, day number two. We have the big fatty on, we're moving on to our silicone, except that we have something a little bit different. This is same, we call this band reinforced silicone. This is a prototype. We're getting ready to launch these. It'll actually have twice as many bands in it. In addition to that, it'll be five ply silicone. This will be the heaviest duty charge tube on the market, hands down. A lot of companies out there who take our designs, knock them off, whatever that's fine but the difference between us and them is that we're always innovating so they can come in and try to knock our stuff off with you know lesser quality parts but we're always going to have the best so for now i'm going to install this one we've already had this on a couple other machines uh, i had this one sitting around so we're going to run it they're really not that much more expensive than the other ones um, but they'll only be available in black anyways cutting to the point this is our blow off valve they now come with a pre-filter um, filter cover you don't need to run a filter or even a pre-filter but uh, some guys want to, yeah, it kind of acts as a muffler, it's not as loud. This rubber seal right here, this is for the OEM charge tube. Uh, we'll get in there, we'll peek around and we'll talk about it, but for the most part, this is gonna get removed because the factory charge tube is plastic. We use a rubber um, seal to seal it really well. It's kind of what sets us apart from everyone else. They're trying to clamp a hard piece of plastic to a piece of metal and it just, there's no seal there. So we actually have a rubber seal on our blow off valve. And again, there's people who got a blow off valve knock ours off. We're always innovating, we're always gonna be better. So that's what makes us better than everyone else. Some tools that we have out are just a flathead, a Phillips some wire snips, so we can cut this uh, reference line down. A 11 mil, eight mil, and a T40. The pros are so easy to take apart. Man. All right, so um, the one thing that guys mix up a lot is that the RPM blow off valve is installed opposite of the factory one. So I'm trying to show you how to get the factory blow off valve off of these uh, pros. It's real simple, straightforward. The uh, instructions for these can kind of differ a little bit because the EVAT models or California models aren't just in California anymore. It seems like Plutters is just building just California models and that uh, they route this reference line different. It's pretty self-explanatory. This is the blow off valve. It goes to here when you replace it. So the wire snips, you really just kind of uh, cut these uh, clamps off of here. This one's on there good. There we go. It's off. We're going to work that too. We don't even care about the hose at this point. We want the blow off valve off there. Alright, so I got this thing picked back with a flathead. At this point, you can reach in there. I kind of grab onto it. And same thing. I just pull it. 
until it comes out. But if you can uh, pick this up, you kind of won the game at that point. The actual blow off valve is connected to this recirculation hose. I'm gonna cut it out there real quick so you guys can get a better idea of what you're up against. There's your factory blow off valve. So a uh, breakdown of what happens is uh, the factory blow off valve is plastic and it sees heat over time. It warps and then it can no longer seal. So uh, ours is billet aluminum. You're not gonna be having those issues. There's actually a video of us just holding the torch against it until the anodized just turns like orange. It's so hot. We install it back on the machine and keep running it. It ain't warping. The O-rings ain't burning. If they do, you actually get an extra O-ring set in your kit now with uh, extra O-ring grease, but they got a lifetime warranty. Doesn't matter what you do, hit us up, we'll warranty it. So we're not gonna completely install this one, but I wanna show you guys how it would be installed. So if you're using this one, boost reference line to the top, the factory blow off valve looks something like this. Ours goes like this. So it would slide in this tube and then you can put your filter on the end of it. If not, you would be putting a billet plug in this recirculation line. Do you want to hear that loud whooshing noise? You would, you know, plug this with the plug that we supply, run your blow off valve, you know, at a downward angle-ish and let it rip. First thing we're going to do is remove this map sensor to T25 Torx. Just going to let it hang out over there. And 11 mil to remove these. And then we're going to work on the front one. And at that point, this thing will probably just pull up out of there. These things have a lot of force behind them. Plastic, man. So the only way to make these plastic ones seal is if they just squeeze them really tight. Plastic doesn't seal good against uh, aluminum. So um, the other thing you're going to see on the players' tar tubes is they blow out these little like rings. They're not consistent on how thick they've been keeping the plastic or ever kept the plastic. It's almost impossible to keep you know, consistency with plastic when you're forming it. And uh, it was create air bubbles and bloop, they just pop holes. That's why we uh, upgrade to silicone. And furthermore, that's why we upgraded to reinforced silicone. The yeah, factory J tube is pretty easy. We're going to remove this clamp, the lower clamp, and we're going to remove the vent hose that goes on the back side of the J-tube. So just start out after all 11 mils, we'll cut the uh, one clamp off. This one down here, this clamp's always the worst. This one's usually not too bad, so. Um, looks like we're all loose. I'm gonna cut the clamp over there. That's literally how we remove all these, just kind of cut, twist. Have it pull on it. This one, we just kind of pull it, push it out of the way for now. This one can come out with it. This one you will fight with. If this one does not come off, literally you just gotta like hit it with your purse and yank on it really hard. It'll come off. All right, so we're gonna be uninstalling this uh, intake sensor and we're gonna be reinstalling it on the RPM J tube. So they come with supplied hardware. We just really just need to remove this. Make sure you uh, keep in mind the orientation because if it has two holes in it, you can just, yeah. off valve recirculation hose we're not going to be using that so it got go we're going to be using this this is just the uh cap for that because we're probably not going to be recirculating we'll just be using this and uh it's really that simple we'll just clamp it on there and be on our way we're going to be reusing the uh crankcase vent for now obviously we have our own catch cans so in the next uh, video or so, you're gonna be seeing us installing catch can on this. So this is easy. We're just gonna, look at this point, it goes so smooth because you're just reinstalling what you uninstalled with better stuff. We're gonna reach back up in there and uh, plug this map sensor in. You're kind of going out of line, but so when you're tightening these silicone hoses, you don't want the clamps all the way to the edge. It's about like, I don't know, 16th of an inch from the edge. We just want to see the silicone start to swell. And that's when you know it's tight enough. So now top one, we're gonna move this bottom one's a little more tricky. There we go. 
go. Everything looks good, feels good. Everything's nice and tight. All right, so this is your crankcase uh, pressure or crankcase ventilation hose. We'll replace this uh, eventually when we do a RPM catch can. But for now, we're gonna put this hose on that fitting using one of these clamps. All right, so at this time, we're gonna install our RPM reinforced charge tubes or five ply thick like we talked about. I actually like to just swab these with some soap and water to help slide on a little easier. This is, uh, by the way, this is your boost reference line. If you have like a boost gauge or a boost activated accessory, that's what that's for. You just remove this cap. There doesn't need to be a zip tie on these. are barbed and uh, they don't ever fall off. So you're good there. At this point, we're gonna tighten this clamp. Same thing, keep a little gap right there. I hold down and you know, keep it all in place. My hand's kind of in the way, but I'm just keeping pressure forward while I tighten. go through and, and tighten all this stuff, make sure it's all tight. Go back to this sensor, pop it in there. So at this point, it is installed. We need to install the blow off valve. Charge tubes are done. Since we're gonna be using the silicone charge tubes, we won't need this rubber seal. I've had guys leave it on, it doesn't really affect anything, but you definitely don't need it. Just gotta pull it off there. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tighten the filter on now. We usually don't run a filter, but for the sake of this video, we will. We get a lot of guys who will use a uh, socket to tighten this thing, and then they're like, my air filter split. I'm like, you cut it in half with a worm gear clamp. Like, of course it's split, but we'll still send you anyone for free. I'm gonna stick this clamp on here. I'm gonna blow it out through there. Voila. Get this clamp when we want it. So at this point, we're gonna route this uh, boost reference hose. It's on the blow off valve. You wanna keep it with a little bit of slack up there. Cut this nice and clean. These are so snug. They really don't need to be zip tied, but we do include zip ties for them. DX zip tie off. It's routed, it's good to go. So yeah, at this point, you can kinda see where we're at. Get everything we want it. It's good, it's snug. Wall valve filters on it. It's time to roll. I've installed hundreds of these. I've built thousands of these, so I know exactly what it takes when to chop the throttle to make it make some noise in neutral. It will make some noise, but not as much as when we're driving it. So whatever, we're going to test it in neutral and then we'll uh, take it out for a rip and then you'll really be able to hear it. So let's fire this thing out, make sure we don't have any codes and uh, make sure we did everything right. Go from there.
sketch cam, they get a lot of like condensation and oil vapors out of their blow off valve. Those blow off valves that are like having like, a 360 degree like exit design that some people sell, um, they'll literally cake full of dirt 